programmers not using AI are missing out. In this video, I'm going to show you a free and powerful tool that will give a huge boost in your productivity and how you can use it for the best results. Oh, and this also provides GPC-4 for free. Now, there's a lot of stigma around using AI, but I actually think that there's no shame in using AI and it's just a tool that developers can use. Now, I don't think that AI is cheating at all and you can still have full control over your project. You know, I look at AI as training wheels that even experts can use and there's nothing wrong with not knowing the answer. Developers cannot know everything. And AI just gives you that extra bit of help to point you in the right direction. Now, while AI is inaccurate sometimes, it's important to do your own research, but it can give you that boost you need to, you know, solve the problem at hand. Sometimes the information just isn't in front of you to actually solve the problem. And a lot of people say that AI just isn't good enough yet, and I actually disagree with this. I think that it's a matter of how you actually use the AI that is the important part. And obviously you don't have to use AI if you don't want to, but um, it's something that I've really found helped in my productivity and helped me actually grow as a programmer and learn new things. Now the AI obviously doesn't teach me everything. What I do is I just ask it a question, it gives me some suggestions, and then I Google it. So for example, if it suggests like a try search algorithm, I'll then go and look at what a try search algorithm is, what the alternatives are, stuff like that. So let's take a look at pieces for developers. If you're interested, there is a link in the description and it's completely for free. And even after they monetize the product, if you sign up now, you'll get an entire year for free of their product, which is really cool. And there's also no bank details required. Full disclosure, Pieces for Developers have very kindly offered to sponsor this video, but the information I'm going to be telling you is all honest opinions, and I am going to be giving some feedback as well. For the last few weeks, I've been using Pieces for Developers for my C project, and I must say it's given a huge boost in my productivity, and it's a lot better than ChatGPT because, you know, number one, you've got access inside Visual Studio Code, and number two, you can give it context, so it actually knows what you're talking about, whereas in ChatGPT, it often forgets what you're talking about and you kind of have to remind it. And the chat isn't the only feature. Pieces has some really awesome features that I think will really help you as a developer as well. And what's even cooler about this is it even works offline. And there's been plenty of times where I've been abroad or on holiday and I want to program, but I don't have internet access or the internet's slow. And it's really nice just being able to have something that you can, you know, quickly ask a question and it gives you the answer without even needing a connection to the internet. Now, I'm going to start with one of my favorite features of the AI, which is the code snippets. So there's actually a bunch of ways you can save code snippets and you can see I've already done a few here and it's really useful because you can now just you know look them up search them and you can choose the way it's searched as well with AI or just with text so for example if I want to uh, convert string to long it'll show me the C example of how I can do this because I've already saved the snippet so next time I want to learn how to do this I don't have to you know google it and find the right article stuff like that I can just quickly search it in the pieces desktop app so in terms of actually saving these there are like a huge amount of ways to save snippets so the first one is in a co-pilot prompt. So you can use whichever AI suits you, and you can also use on device or on the cloud. You could also use GPT 3.5, which is a lot faster. I'm choosing to use GPT 4 because it's a lot more accurate and advanced. But reminder, I haven't paid like a single penny. Pieces haven't given me any access. I've literally just gone on their website, downloaded it uh, with no bank details, and you know, I've got all of this available to me, which I think is really, really cool. But let's say you're using C Sharp and you want to remind yourself how to read files, well, you can simply ask the co-pilot. And the response you get depends on how you ask the question. So just like you are asking a human, if you don't give it enough context or you're not descriptive enough, it's not going to give you a very good answer. So I've specified that it needs to write it to a string variable and it's going to be in C Sharp. So we're going to see what it comes back with. So here we are, and it's even given us a way to handle the errors, which is really useful as well. So all we have to do now is just click save to pieces like so. So what it's done here is just saved it to our list. Now, I'm not entirely sure why it thinks this is JavaScript. Um, I'm going to change that back to C Sharp. But what's really cool about this snippet is it's, you know, given us an, an explanation of what the code actually does. And as well as this is given us links to actually learn about this through the documentation rather than just blindly trusting the AI. So all I have to do is click on the link and it will just load the documentation in my browser. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why this is in um, contrast mode. I don't know if this like is a bug with the app or is just my PC. I'm not entirely sure. 
Uh, but refreshing it seems to fix that, but we, yeah, you can check that this is all accurate and what the AI has provided you It actually makes sense to you So it's a very important thing with AI that you don't just you know blindly accept the code and never look at it again It's important you read the documentation and understand it and then next time you want to do this You might not have to look at your snippet You might just memorize it and you'll know exactly what it does But yeah to conclude this snippets feature is really amazing the amount of times I've been you know desperately searching for github to find old code you know just to remind myself how to do something. It's crazy. And there's been times where I've been looking for a solution and I actually accidentally end up finding my own Stack Overflow post finding the exact same problem. But with this tool, you can, you know, just search something up and see if you've already solved the problem. What I find is that the information on Google, it's often just scattered all over the place and you kind of have to go on like 15 different websites just to find, you know, the exact thing you're looking for. And, you know, having a way to describe what you're trying to do and just have instant feedback is amazing. So something that happens really commonly with ChatGPT is that you're asking it questions and then it just suddenly forgets what you're talking about. Um, and pieces for developers have actually mitigated this with a simple feature. So say I'm looking to create download progress with JavaScript and Axios to show to the user. Well, it's now actually creating an example for me, but what often happens with ChatGPT is if you want to expand on this, it sometimes forgets what the code even is and it can start giving you like completely unrelated code or it can just start getting things wrong. But what you can do here is you can actually click this button up here, which allows you to use it as context in the next messages. So let's say I want to use async await instead of then and cat we can do that. And now what's happening is it's going to use this piece of code here as context for the next question, which is really, really awesome. So you can, you know, fine tune the code as you go. Now, again, you do have to press it as context, but this allows you to really, you know, fine tune what you're actually talking about. Because uh, ChatGPT, it can't guess that. It can't use the previous conversation very well. But with this, you kind of provide it as you go, which is really, really cool. And this uh, language model apparently is also fine-tuned for programming, which makes it even more powerful than ChatGPT alone would be. And the great thing about pieces for developers is you can do a bunch of stuff inside Visual Studio Code too. So say you're going to an old project, I'm going to go to my file explorer and you're trying to, you know, um, reground yourself, remind yourself what everything does because you didn't write comments, uh, you can do that. So say I want to remind myself how this works and I don't want to, you know, read through all the code again, I can literally just select it all and then just ask the inbuilt copilot in Visual Studio Code. So I can just say, what does this do? And uh, another thing I want to note is that I'm actually using 3.5 inside Visual Studio Code, so if I want a really quick answer, I can use Visual Studio Code. If I want a more accurate answer, I can use the one inside pieces, but you can obviously customize these as well. But as you can see, it's described everything this code is doing, and let's say I want to clean this code up a little bit, I can be like, please could you clean the code up? Now it's showing me how I can actually make this code look nicer and cleaner, which is really, really cool. And it's given me a huge amount of code as well. So unlike the free version of ChatGPT where it has a limit, it's actually giving us, you know, a bunch of information in one message, which is really cool. Another one is actually setting the context to a file or folder, as well as different snippets or messages. Another thing you can do inside Visual Studio Code is you can actually look at saved snippets. So all you have to do is, you know, find the language you're using, click insert snippet, and it will just put that straight into my code. Obviously Obviously this is Rust code, so it's not going to work, but you see you see my point. Another great thing about Pieces for Developers is they even have a browser extension. So you can see I've got these prompts here, um, and let's say I want to, you know, find out what this CSS does. Well, all I have to do is click Ask Copilot, and it launches an instance for me. It's, uh, it's really crazy. Or let's say I want to save this snippet. All I have to do is click Copy and Save, and then it's already saving the snippet inside Pieces, uh, and it gives me a live update. So you can see it's already here. I've not, you know, it's not even delayed. And also with the Copilot, pilot explanations is you can still ask it further questions. So I really love the way that they've integrated this. So you could just really quickly, you know, use code from around the internet, save it, all this kind of stuff. And it's all in one place that you can just, you know, search a query from. Another really cool thing is say you want to help someone on Discord. Well, you don't even have to copy the code. All you have to do is screenshot it and it will automatically pass that into something you can prompt Copilot with. And you can use any screenshot you like. All you have to do is paste it in and it's done for you. 
Uh, in this case, I accidentally put it as a code snippet, but all I have to do is launch Copilot and it will explain exactly what the error means in great detail. So as you can see, even errors is able to save it as a snippet. So when you want to Google that error, you can just come straight to this. You don't have to put code snippets in. It can also be errors as well. So yeah, another really cool thing you can do with this is actually provide websites. So say you're using the YouTube API and you don't want to read through all of this documentation. Well, you can just copy the link, you know, and give it as a prompt to the Copilot, and then you can just start asking your questions. And now it's starting to tell me how I can do this uh, just using the YouTube API documentation as a context, which is really cool because a lot of the time the model's just not quite up to date. And when that happens, you can just provide it, you know, the latest websites and it will start actually using that as information. Another really great thing about pieces for developers is you can even provide files as context. So say I come back to an old project and I forgot what the files do. Well, all I have to do is add it to context and you can add multiple as well. And then I could ask it something like, please explain the code inside the file system RS file. And look at that. It started to actually explain what is going on in this file. And we can keep asking it further questions to further understand this code, which is really awesome. But one thing I do want to note is that at the moment you have to be quite specific in the file you're talking about in the prompt. If you just attach a file and then say please describe this code it's not going to know what you're talking about so you do have to be specific but apart from that this is really cool it's giving an in-depth explanation of what's happening in this file and the great thing about pieces is you can provide multiple things as context as well so say i want to include the rename uh documentation into this context well now we've got a file and the rename context and then we could say uh please write a function that renames a file and then it will use both of these pieces of context to try and match your code style as well as the documentation to create this example, which is really, really cool. So another great thing you can do is actually select gists from your GitHub profile, which you should already have signed up with. So I can actually save this as a snippet now and search this later. What I usually find is like finding GitHub gists, you have to go into your profile and then go onto the gist page and it's just a nightmare. But having this, you know, having this feature where I can just take them down from my GitHub account is really, really cool. And because Pieces for Developer is a relatively new thing, there is a bunch of different things they're planning to add. And you can look through here if you like. So it's really exciting to see where this is going to go. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you're interested in Pieces for Developers, remember it's completely for free and you can download it in the link in the description. I'll see you in a few days where I cover an algorithm in C and I'll see you soon.